Today uh, marks the start of what might be Hollywood's most anticipated opening weekend of the year. Barbie and Oppenheimer, known by some as Barbenheimer and others as Barbieheimer. And I haven't quite decided. Uh, I've tried to figure out which. What do you think? Should it be Barbenheim? And so the, Barbenheimer, I think, is what it is. I've seen Barbieheimer, though. If you Google it, that'll come up, too. Look, I think Barbieheimer gives more weight to Barbie. Barbenheimer, Barbenheimer I think, takes more sense. weight to, to you Oppenheimer. Think? Barbenheimer, and it's the. I think it gives too much weight to Oppenheimer, although we should since I, it's universal. Like it okay, too. all right, all right. Barbenheimer. <laughs> so which movie do you want to see? Bar I, I, you're right. I do. It. Some people are seeing both. That they're going to be there for a while. You better get uh, plenty of popcorn. It's going to hit theaters across the country. It's Warner Brothers is the Barbie movie expected to gross as much as 140 million dollars this weekend, while Oppenheimer, uh, from CNBC parent company uh, Comcast Universal Pictures, ex is expected to gross between 40. Uh, and 60 million. Joining us now is Paul Dergarabedian, Comscore, a senior media analyst. If you, I guess if you do this for a living, you, are you excited too? Paul, you've been waiting for this? I am. It's 3.20 in the morning here on the West Coast, and I'm up and I'm ready to go see Barbie and Oppenheimer. This whole Barbenheimer phenomenon is something that's going to give a real shot in the arm to the theatrical movie business at a time when there's a lot of turmoil going on. And according to our Comscore numbers, the summer movie season heading into this weekend is at $2.4 billion, down about 7% from last summer when Top Gun Maverick was leading the charge. But this is going to be really important, a huge weekend for theaters. So many people excited about this. I mean, the fact that we're even talking about this whole mashup of these two movies just creates real excitement. And Barbie, obviously the front runner to take the weekend, but in the long term, Oppenheimer is a major awards contender. So both Universal and Warner Brothers are going to have a stellar weekend. They're going to be different. It's a tale of two trajectories, but uh, no less interesting and fun, by the way. This is a really positive Hollywood story right now. It is. And... It's been rough. It's been rough. I look at 2020, pandemic totals were, were just staggeringly yeah. uh, 6.9, uh, I guess, billion in 2018, fell to 1.4 in 2021, Paul. That is uh, like almost a, a famine. Uh, for, well, I mean, for the 2020, whole 2020 well, 20, 1. March 7, 20 yeah. of 2020 is when the movie theaters essentially shut down. And the box office year of 2020 was at two and a half billion dollars domestically, going down from 11.4 billion the year before. We're expecting to get over nine billion this year, but with the you know the writers and actors strike, that may provide some headwinds here, both for the production pipeline and the ability of actors to go out and promote their movies. This hasn't hurt Mission Impossible or Barbenheimer because these films already had their marketing well in place. This thing is a freight train moving along, this whole Barbenheimer thing. And I think audiences are loving it. And those big screens, too, particularly for Oppenheimer, the IMAX or the, and the premium large formats and that 70 millimeter film experience in some locations is really cool. And then Barbie is creating this notion of going out in groups, seeing the movie together. And then the idea of a double feature where I think AMC reported that they're selling a lot of double feature Barbie and Oppenheimer tickets. This is all great news for the industry, for theatrical box office, and for the studios, but we still have many weeks to go in the year, certainly the summer movie season, which ends on Labor Day Monday. There's a lot of big movies coming out in August. The Meg 2, The Equalizer 3, Blue Beetle, Last Voyage of the Demeter, and others. So this is a really uh, dynamic time, to say the least, at the movies. Double feature. I haven't even heard that term. Uh, <laughs> it's it, been a while. Okay. It's interesting. I mean, okay, Mission Impossible. I heard of that one. Indiana Jones, he's been around. He's 80. Um, yes. It, but there, some of these are, are long in the two. Spider-Man, how many of those can you make? I saw some Chinese consumers, there was an article in the journal yesterday, they're just not buying this stuff uh, anymore. And it is a little bit, some of it is a little bit insipid and boring, and I don't know what the, what the reboot looks like for how we do these things. Uh, Harrison Ford yeah. can't make another one of these. I, I mean, we need to figure something else out, don't we? Well, I don't know. I mean, if a movie's good, I don't think it really is a problem if it's a fourth installment, fifth, or whatever you may want to call it. But you know what the cool thing, going back to your point, Joe, is that 
these two movies are originals. I mean, we all know the Barbie brand, but this is not part of a franchise. Uh, It's not a sequel or a prequel to another movie. And Oppenheimer, obviously an incredible story, but not part of a franchise. So it's very different. But I think that's really cool for these two studios to go all in on these auteur-driven, non-sequel, non-superhero, non-known IP other than the Barbie IP, but not as a movie brand. But now we're seeing this right now in the middle of summer. So this is really, I think, good uh... news for the industry moving forward. You have to create exciting new movies, and we're seeing that this weekend. We don't want a, an Oppenheimer sequel. I don't even know what that means. How would you? Do, yeah. How would you do yeah, that? that? Let's let's. Uh, but you know what? It, that's not about. We don't need an Oppenheimer. It's Christopher Nolan. That's that's pretty amazing. When a director almost uh, is, is his own. It could be like James Cameron or something like that. Oh, he you know, is he, a brand unto Steven himself. Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he's on the in the pantheon or on the Mount Rushmore of directors. Christopher Nolan with some amazing films. He really makes you think. And his movies are incredibly complex, but he has a way of shepherding you through uh, something yeah. like the Manhattan Project and Oppenheimer. And Killian Murphy looks uncannily like the real J. Robert Oppenheimer. And for Barbie to have that star power yeah. of okay. Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling is very powerful. But these two together are positively incredible and something yeah. I don't think we're going to see very often.